Well, we're here at the CCA workbench, and it's time to talk about the Academy rigs and techniques. And Could be time. I'm not real sure. <laughs> it is time, Dave. <laughs> okay. So you're on. We're on. Anyway, we got, you know, the great thing about uh, piers and jetties is there's a wide variety of species that you can target from there. And unfortunately, that's also a downfall because a lot of guys will think, you know, oh, there's all this stuff. I need to be ready for everything. And then they try to drag everything that they own on one of these piers or uh, to the jetty. And, you know, you can overwhelm yourself. I mean, look at all this stuff I've got out here. And, and all this stuff would be good on a pier or a jetty, but you don't want to bring every, you know, everything that you've got. So you want to you try to trim down, want to try to figure out, okay, we're going to target this, this, and this today, and, and, and try to go about it that way. That way you get rid of some of the surplus junk that you're going to be bringing. And, and it, you know, it, it gives you a plan and a little bit better of a, a chance of being successful, I think. So casting a long ways, is that important when you're fishing off of a jetty? Of course, and, and a pier is, or a jetty or a pier. And because a lot of times, you know, they'll be just outside your casting range. And it seems like that happens quite a bit. You know, the Spanish mackerel will come through and there'll be, there'll be two or three guys who can reach them and the rest of us who can't. But if you have something like this, which is one of the, you know, a nice Alvi side cast reel, uh, it's almost impossible to get out of the range of something like this. If you're standing out on a beach or on the end of the pier, you can really wing a three ounce weight an incredible distance, you know, either, you know, two, uh, one ounce of uh, a weight and two ounce bait or something like that, you can really fling it a long, long way. Over a hundred meters. We're yeah, talking 300, 300 feet. plus feet. The 300 feet. And, and what the, the key to it is, is when you turn that, when you turn the reel to cast it, you know, the, the side cast thing, it makes it able for that line to just come flying off the spool exactly. in, in giant loops. And exactly. it just comes flinging off there. And if you have a nice limber rod like this one that's 10 foot long, you can really throw a bait a long way. And it'll also, you can throw lures with this because it, it's a it's a one-to-one -one retrieve, but it's such a big spool, it really smokes them in. I yeah, mean, you, you can you, you can throw, Great a, you drag throw a plug system. with it or whatever you want. 10-year warranty, it's unbelievable. Right, there you go. Good uh, job, Alvis. So some of, some of the lures we were talking about, uh, again, because you're out there on and you're trying to get some distance usually, heavier lures are what you're gonna use. A lot of the times a jig, uh, you know, a lead jig are, are used flare quite hawk. a bit, a flare hawk like that. Well, that's a snook, a snook jig there. And you know, they're great for a, a wide variety of species from redfish to trout to everything else. And mirror lure, uh, the, these are, you know, if you're standing on any pier anywhere in the world, a big 77 MR or a, a 85 MR like this one, a big game, you know, it's got incredibly large hooks on it and it's really heavy, so you can throw it a long way. Uh, I like uh, any of the gotchas. You know, gotchas work really good around uh, jetties and stuff, and you can put a little piece of wire on them because you always, there's always going to be some uh, Spanish mackerels or bluefish around, and as soon as you start to lose plugs, you better get your wire out because you're yeah. going to have a hard time uh, not, you know, keeping track of them because you know, they, they, the toothy critters will come and get you. And, and if you're going to use that wire and you're tying up stuff, try to always use a, a good swivel, a good ball bearing swivel instead of the barrel swivels. Because if you, if you tie a gotcha or any of these swimming plugs on with a barrel swivel to your wire, it's, it's not going to work. The, when, whenever you have a barrel swivel under pressure, it doesn't spin and it'll end up spinning up your line. People go, I can't believe I spun up my line because I had this barrel swivel on there. Well, that, that's why, because that barrel swivel, once it gets a lot of pressure on it, it won't, it won't turn, and it just spins up your line, just like anything else. Um, I like to bring a, a backpack. If I'm on a jetty or, or something like that, a backpack frees up your hands. And when you're, and when you're hopping down through the rocks and whatnot, you want to have at least one hand free in case you fall. I've seen some horrible injuries yeah. on, on, on the rocks because me and my brother, that's, we didn't have a boat forever. And that's how we did most of our fishing was fishing off the pier up at Okaloosa Island uh, where Patty Boy is. And we've caught, we've actually caught dolphin off that pier. That is a very long pier. It stretches a long way out into the into the Gulf of Mexico. And if you're standing out there, you know, ready with with decent gear, uh, we always brought three rods apiece. We could all we could carry three rods in one hand, and we could have a light rod that we could use for bait. We'd had a medium rod 
that we can throw our lures and plugs on and we'd have a heavier rod that when we catch our live baits, that's what we would float out our big live baits on a balloon or a big bobber, something that would keep the bait off the bottom and try to catch kingfish or even dolphin or even sailfish off that pier in Okaloosa Island. Mm -hmm. It was it was a lot of fun doing that. And you could, you know, a lot of times you'd be standing out there and you'd you'd hear the fish coming down. They'd swim into the, in, what's another good thing about a pier is you get to fish a lot of different water from shallow to deep. Right. You know, and you, and you move up and down the pier and, and get to fish different water. But sometimes those, those dolphin would come in into the beach and come swimming down the pier and you could hear them coming down the pier. Ping, 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 ping. Because there'd be a lot of tourists with the rental gear. And the rental gear, you know, they're giving them that eight pound test line and 12 pound test line. And it's been used a hundred times by right. a, a many people and it's all chalky and white. And boy, those dolphins or cobia would come down that line and me and my brother would just be waiting at the end saying, well, if they come this far, we're going to get them. And they'd come and eat our stuff and zing and we'd catch them. And, you know, a, a good thing ab ab about that bridge and pier fishing is, you know, you can pick and choose a lot of times. You can see really well the fish that you're wanting to catch. Sometimes you can't, but uh, you want to make sure that you have a good way of releasing the fish from the pier. If you're, you don't want to, you know, they have these things called bridge gaffs, which is a big, it's just a giant treble hook with four hooks on it, really. Right. And you can just get it underneath a big snook that you've decided is in the slot and hit him or a kingfish or whatever. If you're, if you're, if you're, Doing that with fish that are in a slot limit, though, like snook and redfish, be really careful before you hit them with a bridge gaff. They also make uh, nets, bridge nets, that you can lower underneath the fish and you net the fish, and that way you can let him go. Uh, him up, yeah, and that way you can let him go healthy without putting a, a gaff in him. Or okay. We're all good. We're all ready. That's the sign, Dave. That's, That's the, the sign. sign. That's the sign. That's definitely the sign. <laughs> Shut up, Dave. Okay, so you it's say time to, to go. <laughs> you say to be prepared, but you don't want to overpack. Okay, That's it. Well, I'm an overpacker. That's what I do. Me I've too. got everything on my back.